Okay, so we'll continue with S3 and we have a few more things that we need to discuss. Let create tune class yeah that's the one that we create so there are uh, in management there are few more things that we have to discuss so this one important thing is life cycle what exactly this will do why we need to use this okay let's imagine that we are using this s3 bucket for a few years or months and people are keep uploading the data and they are using it and someday and the price is slowly going up because it's been almost two years or three years whatever it may be just imagine that so people continuously using this s3 so what will happen i mean after a few years this uh, i mean people won't delete the data or do the maintenance whenever we have a no limit of data then people obviously will just keep uploading and forget about the maintenance or this thing so to avoid those kind of things, not avoiding means, I mean, to maintain the data within the buckets, uh, uh, we have some kind of policies here. So what is advantage by using that is, delete objects more than 365 days, move the objects from one storage class to another storage class, if they are uh, three years old or that. If we have a old version, just delete all the old versions. After enabling the versions, you delete all old versions which are more than 365 days. Like that, what are the, not only 365, 20 days, 10 days, what are this? Those kind of management we can be done by using this life cycle rule. So we can better manage that uh storage uh, i mean uh, so we can control the cost or we can make sure that unwanted files has been deleted those kind of things can be done let's see how we can do this okay so let's uh, it's in management and we are in life cycle now so let's click and add life cycle now. just to put name it say rule zero one rule zero one okay let's put that so you can put the prefix uh, or tax based filtering here so just we are applying this for a entire bucket so let's click on next so what's the options that we got here current version or previous version so okay i'm fine with the current version in this place we can add a transitions transition to what let's select this transition to standard infrequent access after these many days or transition to Amazon Glacier don't worry about the glacier so we haven't covered we have a small separate session on it it's again a archiving storage so it's low cost to archival store where we can keep the data for years or decades so we can use the glacier it's more 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 cheaper than normal s3 the second one more storage option we have okay so if we have something on s3 if it is more than 30 days move it to another storage class so this is what we are seeing here okay this is one option let's put that so if it is more than creation 10 days or 20 days the minimum required before transfer to standard is i mean 30 days okay let's put 30 okay so so leave the transition this expiration we will see in next one click and save it so what we just did is we created a rule which can move which can change the storage class of your object from a standard to standard infrequent access so what is the benefit to us if we change the storage class we know what is the storage class, right? 
any guess i mean what's the benefit if you move to the storage class and the storage class why we need to move that mm. if you forgot i believe so what is the storage class here we'll go back what is the storage class how many storage class we have Wow, oh, guys, all forgot. Okay, so what is this? Did we talked about this or not? Standard infrequent access reduced redundancy. Yes or no? <laughs> uh, yeah, we talked about. Okay, so we have uh, three different kinds of storage class in S3. The main difference is like, um, I mean, based on it's like a difference. Let's imagine these uh, different kinds of uh, SANs. So if you put files in one SAN, you'll get this cost. If you put these files in this SAN, you will get this cost. And in overall, this is the, when in out of these three, this is... Uh, Highest price is better than, cheaper than standard and cheaper than the standard infrequent access. I mean, so if you are planning to move between any storage class, whatever the main intention behind your thought or behind your work, ideally, oh, you have a 10 petabytes of data in standard. Are we really using this storage? I mean, are we really reading the storage? I mean, this content within this S3 bucket? Maybe not. Maybe yes. So, if we see that, I mean, maybe we can move it to standard infrequent S because no one actually reading the files or because it's two years older than, I mean, people are not really using it. Uh, there. So, maybe if we move the standard to infrequent access, we may get some few dollars saved. Okay, that that kind of thinking people will have. That's the I mean our especially our job to take and create this kind of policies. Okay, that's the main reason of it. Okay, let's close that. Management. No, no, I have one question in here. Yes. Uh, yes, actually I'm uh, I'm at the Amazon S3 bucket, but I cannot see properties and permissions. The management tab. You're not seeing properties, permissions, and management. Yes, I can see only the bucket. When I click on S3, I can see only the create bucket uh, button. Ah, definitely, you won't see it. Do you have any buckets? Yes, I do have three buckets here. Did you select any bucket? Uh, click on it. Click oh, on the... Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 I Okay, right. So let's go back to this rules again. Add Cypher. I mean, let's add one more rule. What are the other options? Let's see. Okay, earlier we just moved or we just transitioned the files from one storage class to another storage class. Let's put rule zero two here and go on next. Okay, current option. Now. This is very simple, right? Previous or current, you can select any one. So now we don't want to do this transition. Let's go to the expiration. There are a few more. Okay, so <coughs> this configure expiration on current version and after expire the current version after three series. That means you can delete the file. It will be marked as a delete and and then you can clean up the marked as a deleted option. So it doesn't directly delete it. Initially, it will mark as for deletion and then it will delete. So on current version, after 365, just mark as delete. So if you believe that people are using for, uh, if you just provide the S3 for keeping the temporary storage for 30 days, make it just 30. So after 30 days, guys, it's only temporary storage. You all can, entire organization can use S3 for upload and download. But since the, as per the cleanup process, we will be deleted the files after 30 days. 
that's what we communicate to entire team so when we have an organization when we have a shared folders I mean people will be automatically they just use it and they will forget to delete it that's a human nature so what they will do is after 30 days we are doing the maintenance so all the files which are created more than I mean which are aged more than 30 days will be deleted so like that we can do some management here in the same way yeah we have one more option of clean up incomplete multi-part upload this one we just need to cover a little bit theory okay leave this and uh, expert client and save it okay so <clears throat> what we will do so what's this multi-part upload so what is the maximum size that we can upload to s3 6 GB oh. any other guess 5 TB okay 5 TB of the single file that we can upload to um, S3 bucket okay so what will happen if you are trying to upload a TB of the single file so what will happen so people will try to upload and uh, um, what will happen so it will take some time uh, to upload that file so what if we upload that file by dividing into let's imagine the file size is 5 TB and uh, if you divide that file five times I mean the 1 GB I mean uh, 1 TB 1 TB 1 TB and upload all five files simultaneously it will take less time right so in the same way I mean you might use the torrents or uh, some download tools where actually if you're trying to download what it will do is it will use some split option and you will uh, download multiple files and once it is downloaded the tool will combine all of them and give you the single file this is how it will file it will happen for the large file size so for that I mean uh, server side and the client side should support that uh, multi-part upload uh, protocols so AWS S3 supports multi-part upload so that means if you have a large files while uploading you have to use that command or you have to use uh, some tools which support the multi-part so the largest files can be split into small files and it will upload simultaneously multiple files and combine them once it is completely all small chunks of files has been uploaded to S3 so S3 has that capability so if your client has your capability through CLA we can force we can use that command multi-part and it will upload the files using a split so do you see the advantage if you have a multi-part upload largest files will take less time while uploading because it has the multi-part upload capability so it can, the tools will support split and it will upload the small chunks and combine them once we have all the files so why we are discussing that here in life cycle rules rule three next next current version clean up incomplete multi-part approach after seven doors seven days so why we need to configure this what's the advantage that we will get so if you do <clears throat> I mean let's imagine that uh, across the organization I mean many people are trying to upload the data since it is s3 people will start using it and they will upload the files and download the files while uploading so sometimes uh, if it is a 5 TB file or 10 TB file it will split small files not uh, so it's 5 TB so it will split into small chunks and try to upload so after a few minutes you decide okay ah, oh, it's a wrong file I don't want to do this it's another file that I supposed to do it just cancel it okay done or your management said okay when you are in the middle of upload okay we are we done with job I mean we no need to do any uploads to the S3 cancel it 
So sometimes tool cancel or internet problems. So there are some things might happen while you are doing the upload. So that means you have a, some incompleted multi-part upload files on S3 bucket. So what will happen? Who will clear up? It's no use, right? If you have an incomplete uh, folder, I mean files, because until unless you upload all the files of single this, uh, single file, then only it can combine and give you the actual file. So incompleted multi-part upload files are no use. Uh, so we can create this policy and maybe every day you can run this job so it will delete which are more than seven days. So what is the benefit that we will get? It will just cost saving. It's not for small organizations, so 5 TB or 10 TB, but if it is a major organization, we can just put implement this automatically. It will save some money. Okay. This way we can put something else. Okay, this is the life. So this real time people will use a lot for deletion the files, moving the storage class. Yes, people will use. So, what is the other three options? It's fairly for the management so to see what is happening within the bucket, and what is the size of the file and which. Uh, who don't, I mean, uh, what is the percentage of the storage, I mean, how many uh, files are in which storage class, those kind of information we can get it here. Okay, and see so this bucket doesn't have much data. Let me go to the one that I keep the data, uploads and class videos that I will keep it. So let's go to this management so we can get some idea of it. Okay, management, not life cycle rules. I have something here. Delete these rules. I don't want to have any rules. Yes. Delete. Okay, let's management. Let's see what it looks like. Analytics, yeah. Now we can see some data, right? So it will tell you how much data is there on reduced redundancy and standard redundancy have 2 TB. Data retrieved is also 2 TB. Somebody has downloaded uh, 2.56 data downloaded. Standard interest 5 and no one is using this. Any data glacier. Oh my God, I moved some 1.7 GB in glacier. Okay. Okay, I need to think about this. It will start charging me. Okay, with this we can we have some info about your S3 bucket. We have a info about S3 bucket. So how much data has been data retrieved and the storage? Okay, you have this much data. The data retrieved is almost 3.7 in this fifth end of month. So I will be charged for the, this transfer also. So yeah, let's again retrieve a graph. How much they retrieve? It's almost equivalent to this one. It's the same graph, only individual data retrieval. So storage wise, a retrieval. What is the storage? And the data retrieval is this one. Okay. Did you get this info, guys? So just uh, information stats about what's happening within that. So what we can take, if you see, look at that, it's useful to take a call. Uh, can we move some more data because our retrieval is very less. I mean, reduce redundancy, the no data has been retrieved. So no one is using any data which is stored on uh, reduce redundancy. So maybe we can move it to Glacier. It is more cheaper than this S3. Yeah, there is a possibility. Okay, so that kind of decision, so you can make it by looking at these data. So we have an again metrics. So what exactly this? How much storage entire data? See here and the bucket size entire data that we have bucket size bytes. We have in the standard storage, it's uh, 540 MB. And in standard storage average per day, the
the usage it's reached here 1.8 to almost every day people are downloading and this is a graph and the number of objects count per day almost 260 and I think I have someday deleted most of the files so at that time it reached to this and again it reached to it's slowly glowing up to this 15, 16, 17 because we enable the cloud logging right every day it will create two objects so it will give the count number of objects count per day so slowly the objects are increasing in our bucket around 300 we have objects in that bucket okay, this is one kind so what else we have in inventory it might be useful even lifetime so what it will do is it will create a record I mean every day at some time it will create the inventory what it looks like is so I just created this so it will be stored in this class PDF uh, bucket so if you click add new and just check all this what is the information that you want to get in it so what is the object side what is the name of it in which storage class it is all this information we can get on a single file, a single Excel file. So uh, if you save it and give a name of it, so it will be saved and stored every day. It will generate a file. Let's look at the existing one. Okay, this these are the world reports, right? Entire bucket, and I just put IN20 is the name like HHH, and I selected this, and class PDF is the bucket name that I use. So <clears throat> let's go to this class PDF. So let's look at that. So how it looks like. We'll see. Class PDF, let's click on it. And these are the videos in 20 and click data. And these are the files that are generated every day. So let's try to download this file. Click download. Yeah, I haven't downloaded. And, and if I expand this, double click. Okay, yeah, it's like entire inventory of that bucket. So in this, this is the bucket name, and we have a file of like this, and within that we have a folder called Junite, and under Junite we have this file still 17. This is our class videos okay I am keeping all our videos so this is we don't have a 20 uh, 17th only why we have a 17th we should be having uh, um, let me open this one second guys and second okay. this file was generated on 20th morning 5 o'clock you have, might have placed after that. Uh, today, what is today's date? 21st. Yeah, right. So I, I put this yesterday after. Okay, right. So this haven't generated today log. Okay, that's the reason. Because yesterday class also I uploaded. So tonight we have 20th here. Okay, right. Okay, then no issues. <coughs> okay, so... Okay, this is how we can see in real time. Yes, this is very much useful to see which files are uploaded, what is the size, and what is the storage class. See here, what is the date of it, and I should be seeing the storage class. Yeah, this is the place. Standard and frequent, standard, all in standard, and glacier also. There is a huge data from this. 
all class 400 has been moved to this old data when it was this is the March March classes has been moved to Glacier excellent okay so this is how we can generate the inventory and might be useful for you I mean in real time people will go with and they can take a call uh, what happened to women whether we need to keep this or not or something like that they can okay so this is all about s3 guys so any questions on this so we can move on to another service <coughs> uh, you said in the life cycle whenever we choose in the market as a delete and after that it will be deleted mm -hmm. how long it will be stored in the in, the, in between the process so again it will be again we need to make a policy of it so let's go through that uh, So again, this will be depends on the uh, policy that we create up expired object delete markers. So once we put expired, then we can create a policy of uh, clean up all deleted objects. This is how we can clean up all uh, which are marked as expired. Okay. So it won't be visible for us, but uh, uh, I mean by putting this, all files will be captured. But I, if, uh, if I have any date, let me find out. Even I, I didn't know. But with this, we can clean up all which are marked as a deleted. We can apply okay. this rule. So what will happen is all uh, the in earlier session we marked as 365 days. All files will be marked as deleted and now we apply this whatever the files which are marked for delays just delete it okay this one we apply okay. this this way we can delete it so yeah if the, can you show me the, can you show us the uh, multi-part upload by using the CLI or some other tools uh, some other tools I haven't tried but we can, I can show you that's not a big deal okay so I will show in CLI but we will come to that CLI in few days then I will configure our uh, Windows machine to connect AWS then we will see that just remind me if I forgot so I will do that okay. or if there is any tool that is available so we can see it um, yeah, but I haven't, yeah, um, on. yeah multi path upload actually mm -hmm. the database files now or if we can split into multiple files then uh, how it works like you know to restore the database files mm -hmm. so we have to so it is so it will use the inbuilt mechanism for us it will be a single file while uploading it's automatically because it supports the multi-part upload in S3 itself and the client itself, so it will manage. So while uploading, we ma we manually don't divide it. If it is a 5 TB of database, it's automatically divide while uploading, and it will go multiple streams and combine it back itself. So you will see as a unique file after completion okay, of. Sure. <coughs> and. Um... Uh, I have about 25 TB backup file. I need to restore that file. Uh, uh, then, uh, then that one you have to think of uh, other method of uh, uh, can't do that. I mean like that. Maybe you can use the storage gateways 
or if you have a uh, mechanism of uh, one mechanism of splitting that file and uh, doing that then maybe you can but uh, it won't support to S3 but you can um, use the storage gateway or you can send in a disk to AWS and they can put on storage or you need to configure the replication between your you can configure AWS server as a secondary but People won't do that. 25 TB of data is uh, take long time. So we can send in a disk to AWS and they will directly attach to um, in required folder or whatever it is. There is a method. Uh, that is, a, yeah, you mean a lift and shift method or something? Yeah, lift and shift. You can send the drives as well. Okay. <coughs> Even if it is petabytes, they have a snowball concept. So within few days they will send to you and it will be marked with some uh, digital uh, naming for your disk and you just they will just connect it and you can directly access that data. Even petabytes okay. of data also is called snowball concept is there in there. Okay, sure. Okay, so what else? So now we will move on to another service that is called DNS. Okay, DNS when we have networking and content delivery. So what exactly this DNS? In AWS, it is called root 53. What it provides is it will provide a DNS service so you can host your zones here, DNS zones, and also you can buy the domains, domain names here like Godaddy and Network Solution. You can also buy a one domain here. Actually, I purchased a domain cloudcoach.in and also I purchased one domain from the GoDaddy to, for the test purpose. So that is pidducloud.com. There are two domains that I purchased for testing. So even you can buy a room for it won't cost you 100 rupees high enough. So you can, if you want to do the labs on DNS, you better buy a one domain. Okay, so it won't charge, I mean 100 rupees you can buy in it and uh, for one year, so you can go with that. <clears throat> so, what is the difference? What exactly we need to learn? I mean, it's a normal DNS, so what's the special about Route 53? So why we need to learn specially Route 53? So, it's a normal, so does everyone have idea of uh, what is DNS or or any questions of how it works? I mean, normal DNS, what is the purpose of DNS? No, sir, I don't. Who is that? Sai. Sai, okay. Apart from Sai, anyone have a doubt about, I mean, uh, what's DNS? Okay, good, I think no one has. Sai, I'll cover you separately for you because uh, uh, I mean it's just um, I mean who are working should be knowing it but uh, I think you are fresher so you might not know but I'll cover you this okay maybe that's okay. okay. <clears throat> so okay let's imagine that we know the, what what is the purpose of DNS we know but what is the special about this route 53 management so apart from the normal DNS services, Route 53 can support, they have some routing policies. What this means is while creating any records, like if you create, I mean I am now uh, this cloudcoach.in zone that I hosted here. And let's try to host, let's delete this, um, I need to change it again. Okay, so what is this? Uh, name source. Oh, let me go daddy.com.
Select an image with an apartment building. One, two, three. Mm. Okay. Um. So, what is the special about this? I mean, we have a few routing policies that will make the difference between other DNS service to this. So we have some, especially apart from the simple, so we have a, um, <coughs> uh, failover, latency, geo, and there is one more. So we have a total four. Uh, what happened? I didn't get the mail ads. I'll leave it for now. Okay, so let's try to create a new zone here. So let's imagine this is empty. Even for you, it will be empty. Let's try to create a hosted zone. And let's imagine test me is the zone that we are hosting here. Testme.com. And just click on create. So we just created the testme.com. So what this names, name servers indicates, these are the name servers that this test me is hosted out of, I mean, AWS might have many, but now this test me dot domain name was hosted. DNS zone was hosted on these four name servers of AWS. Like that, these ones, cloudcoach dot one in is hosted on these four name servers. It might not be the same for all the zones, okay? with the cloud and these are the four domains that is hosted <clears throat> so once it is hosted on our GM I mean on our AWS DNS server so while creating the records it will make a huge difference so let's try to create a record let's like app app.cloudcoach.com that's imagine that's a new application that we hosted and let's imagine that it is hosted on 2.2.2.2 that's a fake IP that I'm giving and click and in routing policy it's a just a simple just create this is the normal way if this is the same thing you will get in a normal DNS servers also so what difference it will make here is if you see app 1 <coughs> and if you say these are the main policies that we want to land weight based routing policy latency failover geolocation so we can configure only few records will go to this and around 50 percent should go to this uh, server let's imagine if you have it same application hosted in two locations and uh, let's imagine microsoft.com hosted in two locations one server in uh, one set of servers is there in India, one set of servers there in US, so it's for failover purpose or load balance. They build exact the same sites in two locations. So they can configure uh, if, uh, I mean, 50% of the traffic should go to the Indian servers and 50% should go to the servers is there in US. In that way, we can configure using the weight base and the latency based and whichever is response fast to the end user like if I'm sitting in London and if I try to access the Microsoft.com so they they have two locations one is in US and one is in India but whichever is response fast and DNS will resolve that IP address <coughs> 
that's a latency based and we have a failover if US fails just fail over to India so it's like an active passive earlier one is both will be active so any service will support but here let's imagine we have both environments but if US is fails then only we can go to the India servers that way we can use the failover geolocations what is the geolocation if something I mean for Chinese people it just get this server they should be served from this server because uh, they want uh, in Chinese language so we don't want to give that US one I mean we don't want to mean so that by default site will be Chinese if any IP is generated and not generated if somebody is accessing from China they will be served only Chinese website they can go to this set of IP address that way we can configure if it is in India uh, let's go to this set of uh, servers if it is from US let's go to this set of US like that we have a four different kinds of routing policies that we have so how we can test this how we can do it to slap with this <clears throat> let's see let's create some fake uh, records and uh, there is an uh, let's try to we created one record by it so global DNS <coughs> checker uh, there is a third-party tool that can be used for uh, many IT engineers so they will use what is the result of DNS in uh, so if you want to check what is the IP it is resolving to Microsoft how you will do you will what happened guys are you able to hear me yes, okay what happened is it a Google problem oh man if it doesn't work it's a challenge to do the test could not be found how come it's... yeah I don't know actually I'm uh, connecting through phone I can uh, hear you but uh, others, uh, other people they are connecting through web Aditya and Sairam are you able to ah, okay right like so yeah, yes I okay. think yeah good good okay <clears throat> mm, okay let's look at other DNS checker Fine. This is a very good tool that uh, it will be used. Yeah, maybe this is useful. I mean, it, the tool that I am looking is can try to resolve from different location. If somebody, if somebody asks you to check what is the IP it is resolving, you will open up your command prompt like this. What happened, man? And let's look if this could not be found. For us, it's accessing. We are able to access those servers. Yeah, I think it's it's now it is working. Maybe the DNS in my system or my ISP had issues. Okay, see here, NS lookup tool. Okay, what ideally you will do, you will open up the command prompt CMD and try to ping that what is happening. You will google.com right you will get an IP but what is the IP that you guys are getting I don't know right from US it might be different because Google manages a different uh, search engines in different locations it doesn't go always a single location so for you guys it might change if you want test you can test it out so but I'm sitting in India so how can I test what is IP it is resolving across the country across the different countries I can use these tools so if I put google.com here it will tell you what is IP resolution in different countries okay let's query it see here 
for United States, it's giving this. For Jakarta location in United States, it's giving this IP. And each country have a different IP ranges. For Israel, it has many IP sets of IP. And Peru, we have, from what we have in India, do we have something? India, it's Vodafone, Mumbai, it has a 216.142. Is that the same thing that we have? Uh, uh, um, no, it's again different. So, even India, they might be doing something. Else. So, at single place, we can check across the globe what is the IP it is trying to resolve. So, that way, you can check it out. So see here, across the globe, in different locations, it's trying to check it. So what is the app? The one that we created, app.cloudcoach.in. This is the one that we created, right? In root 53, app, cloudcoach.in. So what is supposed to resolve, even for across all countries, it should be 22222, right? Uh, that's good. Search. Fine. Okay, now it's resolving. Even though it is fake IP, just uh, DNS doesn't know whether it's fake or right. So it is resolving it. So let's try to create a weight based uh, record and see what will happen. We will give the 50 50 weight base. So half of the country should at least, I mean, we don't be accurate, guys, but maybe. Some records will show you the one IP and some records will show you the same IP. But we'll create the same one, same record, same name. What that means? Let's see. Weight based. So let's put that application name is WT. So it will be easy to remember easy to remember. So create same and let's put three dot three dot three dot three. Let's imagine this is located in India. Okay. And the routing policy is weight based. Okay, weight is let's put five zero here. Uncreated. Let's put and in set we can give whatever you like. It's an expression of it. Okay. So what we need to do, we created one environment in India. Let's imagine that we are creating one more in for the same application, one more in US. So let's put that IP is 4.4.4.4. So we have a two environments like Microsoft and Google. They have almost hundreds of environments. But let's imagine that we a small company. We put in two locations. Okay. And here. So I just created a weight 50 and 50. So we have two records for the same application but in two locations so what dns will resolve which ip it will resolve for 50 percent of the queries because we mentioned a 50 for 50 percent of the queries it will respond 3333 and 50 percent of the queries it will respond 4.4.4 let's look at this info in this w t okay this is the application name. Let's click search. <clears throat> See here? Did you get the difference? Four, three, four, three, 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 four, three, four, three, three, four, 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 three, four, four. So this is how it is weight based a routing policy can be configured. So across the globe, uh, based on the number of requests that is getting to the DNS server, it will respond. If it's getting 10 requests, for five requests, it will respond three. For five requests, it will respond four. Do you understand this? Weight-based routing policy. Any question? I'm not hearing any confident answer. Do you think it's useful, this kind of routing policy? Mm. What happened? No, no, it's really good. Yeah. 
Yeah, I understood, but I don't know what is the use of that. What was the use of that? Good question. So let's imagine that. Yeah, it's finally, yeah, if you don't know it, that's good. So let's imagine that we have an environment. Uh, we have our own data center. Okay, good. And that we are planning to migrate that application to AWS. Okay. So, okay, good. So we have an, a site called intranet.sampanu.com. So all the my application entire organization details will be there. So HR information, portal information, whatever. Let's imagine that we have a site, some portal about my organization. Okay, so we plan to migrate that to AWS. So we build a new environment and migrated the entire data. So we have a two identical uh, website. So, so um, on June twenty first, I'm planning to migrate it, but I have a doubt. So, do I? I mean, whether my application in AWS is capable enough to host or serve all the requests that my server is currently doing, or do we have any issues? Can we test it? Is there any way then to test it? Yes. What if we divert 20% of the traffic from my current environment to the AWS environment? So can we do that? Yes. By using the weight based, you can move only 20% of the traffic that is coming to the main server can be moved to the, uh, the application set which is there in AWS. How? By creating the AWS uh, weight-based routing policy, keep 80 on your main servers and keep 20 on AWS environment record. So only 20% of the records will the requests will go to the AWS environment. So by that you can test this and that is the use case. Did you get that now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for today guys. We'll touch base again tomorrow. We will do the remaining uh, three routing policies and uh, then we'll continue to another service. We'll do that the remaining two. This is the most useful tool guys. NSLOOKUP tool where you have a global issue so it will be very useful to check across the globe what is its result. Sorry, I have one doubt. Yeah, go on. Uh, if I have uh, two videos uh, in S3, I stored one in a standard and one in a reduced redundancy. Mm -hmm. And uh, if customer is using both at the same rate, and uh, he uh, will Amazon will charge more for the reduced redundancy uh, uh, one. So you have uh, two files. One is stored in standard, and some files stored in reduced redundancy. Okay. What's the question? That's after that. Uh, if the customer is using both at the uh, like, if three guys uh, downloaded the standard one and three guys downloaded the same one like at the same rate mm -hmm. uh, will Amazon charge for me for uh, for the reduced redundancy one okay. more good question so there are two ways in S3 charging one is where you put the data and one is the transfer the data how much data is downloaded from the S3 so for the for downloading, there is no change whether you downloaded the data which is from standard or whether you downloaded which is from reduced redundancy. Okay, but because there is a charge difference, where because you use a two different kind of thing, the price will be varies for for the data that you stored on standard and the data that you stored on uh, reduced redundancy. But infrequent access, there is a chain, there is a difference of uh, uh, charges. If you have an infrequent access while retrieving, the charge is more. So that means if you try to download the file which is there in infrequent access, apart from this download charges, since you access the file which is there in infrequent storage, you will be charged. Okay. 
Okay, so any more questions, guys? So we will continue this DNS tomorrow and then till then have a nice day and we will touch base again tomorrow. Bye guys. Thanks, man. Thank you.